Hello, and welcome to this week's episode of Healthy Innovators Live TV. My name is Barry Schreier, and I'm your host, and I'd like to thank the many tens of thousands of viewers from around the world who dial into these weekly episodes to learn from some of the most interesting, ambitious, and successful people who are making a positive contribution to healthcare and well being. Our vision is to improve the health and the well being of people around the world by supporting innovation in healthcare and supporting health tech entrepreneurs. So we're very proud to thank our sponsor, Barclays Bank Eagle Labs, who's been a very generous supporter of us for many years, and we're grateful for your support. This week, we have a special episode featuring Jen from Barclays Eagle Labs and a number of health tech entrepreneurs. So I'm really glad to introduce you guys and to have you on board. Jen, hello, how are you doing today? Hi, Barry. Yeah, really great. Thanks. Thanks for having us here today. Excellent. Yeah, thank you very much for joining us. So this is Jen, who is the health tech innovation lead at Barclays Eagle Labs. Jen, I just want to begin, if that's okay with you, with a few questions, because we're very curious about you and the background of this high profile and very successful program that you guys have been running. Absolutely. So uh, just to begin with, can you just tell us a little bit about Barclays Eagle Labs and uh, how it all began? Yeah, sure. So uh, back in 2015, actually, we had some uh, underused Barclays space that became available. Um, so we decided to repurpose those and create an incubator community. So a, a home for startups and entrepreneurs. Um, nice. So our, our first site was in was in Cambridge above a branch, actually. So oh, some wow. underused space that that was just been left sort of empty for a while. Um, and we turned that into a rapid prototyping uh, sort of maker space um, venue where businesses could come in and utilize the tools to help with their prototypes. Um, that nice. was followed up pretty quickly with a, a second site in Bournemouth, which again, a, you know, an incubator site. So, so they became our Eagle Labs. That's you know what the the uh, the premises became, and um, and our purpose really with those spaces was to provide um, access to co-working space and mentors and learning tools, um, and and then a space for you know delivering events and, and workshops really to to bring together lots of support for um, helping businesses to scale. Yes. Yes, fabulous. Well, I've experienced it myself personally and directly, and I know how uh, worthwhile it is. And uh, I've seen the buzz and the, the value that is delivered there. So um, extremely interesting to hear how it all began. How has it evolved over the past few years? Um, well, yes. Yeah, so since we launched, we've, we've actually grown our network. We've got over 20 sites um, across wow. various towns and, and cities. Yeah, in nice. the UK, um, which is which is great progress. Yeah, they're homes to hundreds of, of startups. Um, mm you know, which, which is really great. Uh, some of our, our Eagle Labs, as I mentioned, are, are Barclays spaces, but collaboration's really been the foundation of what we do. Um, yes. And, you know, over that over those past five, five and a half years, we've we've built uh, nationwide partnership networks who share the same vision of us, really, to, you know, fuel the UK economy by promoting that entrepreneurship um, yes. in the space. And like many organisations, we've had to adjust our model during the pandemic. Um, obviously, our physical sites had to, we had to close our doors various times throughout the last sort of, 12 months or so and, yeah. and we've, we've been delivering support remotely um to those businesses now by you know hosting regular events as you know some with yourself and and nationally on our youtube channel and and also sort of educational content through our website so uh, yeah lots has happened in in five years excellent and congratulations that's very impressive growth and uh like i said i've experienced it personally and uh, really proud to see what you guys have accomplished and how you have managed successfully through the pandemic why have you guys elected to support health tech in particular? Um, well, so traditionally the spaces um, our Eagle Lab started as industry agnostic, so there was no set sort of theme. But a few years ago, we started to look at, you know, what industry sectors did we feel were right for disruption? Where yes. was there more like investment becoming available um, or, or government grants or initiatives? Um, mm. and, and also where, where was more, where were there more startups emerging? And we, we identified health tech as certainly one of those areas. Um, so so that was why really and, and this sort of forms in a in a, in a suit of other uh, industries so as a bank obviously we look at fintech um but we've also been looking at law and agri energy games oh, okay. sports. so th so there's a, a few sort of industry industry programs in addition to what i sort of lead on with the health tech oh, okay excellent no that's extremely interesting i mean healthcare obviously and health tech uh, within that is a very broad um uh space it's a broad sector isn't it yeah so uh, do you guys have a area of focus or um what are you looking at within the big broad world of health tech so yeah as you, as you say many subsectors within healthcare um so really we're looking to connect 
with founders across the board. So we were one of the first um, partners for the or one of the partners for the first Precision Medicine Accelerator in the UK. Nice. Um, so obviously, that there's variances within precision medicine there, medical devices, um, diagnostics, um, and we've also supported other programs in digital health. Um, mm -hmm. I think we've seen um, during the pandemic uh, quite a big growth in in innovations in the social care sector or age tech. Um, yes, and you know we've been working alongside some of uh, the UK care home providers looking at kind of matching those unmet needs um, you know that, that are emerging but I guess ultimately we're, we're looking to support the promotion of new and emerging technologies that are either designed to improve independent living health management um, increased prevention and um, giving sort of anything around longer healthier lives really which is you know going to impact all of us isn't it so absolutely Yes, uh, according to the Economist newspaper, uh, healthcare is the largest industry in the world. Uh, it's experiencing enormous growth. We mm -hmm. know, obviously, because of the pandemic, uh, the demand for healthcare services is a profoundly important element in in our society. So I'm um, glad that you guys are taking such a pivotal role in it. What are you guys trying to achieve? What are the goals of Eagle Labs itself? Um, so really, trying to break down, I guess some of the barriers that entrepreneurs face. Um, so we, we create and deliver programs and, and gain partnerships and support based on what our founders tell us that they need really. So, sure. um, you know, it's it's all sort of organically grown from from based from that. But I guess also the, the other element to the industry focuses is that we're bringing together corporates obviously we're a bank we, we have a number of relationships with with corporate companies nice. um you know our clients industry bodies academics um and startups to help industry sectors to transform and, and understand how they can adopt that technology and in, in innovation i guess us as a as a bank ourselves have gone through transformation ourselves yeah, exactly. um you know with, with digital banking so it's it's sort of those learns as, as to how a large company can can do that and apply that into other sectors Hmm. Hmm. Well, that's interesting. What are examples of the support that you offer to uh, new and also to established health tech companies? Um, so obviously we've got, as I mentioned, the physical network. So our, yeah. uh, you know, our sites, which are collaborative spaces, um, you know, for people to base themselves in and get access to that support. Um, but we also, from a health tech um, perspective, um, we do national events. So every month we cover, we bring in experts and cover various topics such as nice. regulation, procurement. Yes. Um, we've got one next month coming up around IP, protecting your IP, and then fundraising and all the different stages of fundraising and preparing for, for that. So. Mm. Um, we've spent the last two years really building out our health tech ecosystem. So that, you know, really enables us to signpost and make those relevant connections um, between the founders um, to industry or investors or, or corporate or larger mm -hmm. sort of organisations to that they potentially could, um, you know, sell to. Yes, I think all those services are incredibly important and uh, often easily overlooked in terms of providing that broad basket, so to speak, of supporting services and capabilities. What would you say some of the challenges are in the health tech industry coming up these days and in the near future? Um, I think there's there's always been a bit of a challenge with small companies trying to sell to large organisations. Um, and then I guess you add in the various procurement and supply chain, supply chain factors, yes. um, especially in healthcare, um, it adds more complexity. Um, Absolutely. So, but however, saying that, I think the pandemic's brought some of those issues to light. So, you know, there could be, that could be a way of, for some of those barriers to be removed and make it easier for startups to navigate. Um, mm -hmm. I think connectivity between services is key. And, you know, we know technology plays a big role in that, especially if you, you know, if you look at innovations in the finance sector, as an example, in the last decade with open banking, as an example, and sure. um, how technology can help you connect to all the various stakeholders across the health tech, uh, healthcare sector. Um, I mentioned earlier, but, you know, I think social care has, a big way to go and I think that this is the area that will perhaps see the most innovation and growth in the next sort of mm. five to ten years mm -hmm. um, with, with, with uh, you know the demographic of, of people needing care the, the needs of people are changing obviously all the time the way that we uh, operate and use technology um, the way that we sort of um, take it into our own hands sometimes you know that sort of subscription um, service model has, has is starting to see more and more of that in the healthcare space as well. So, exactly. um, so yeah. Yeah, yep. no, it's all really, really worthwhile. And I can imagine there's an awful lot of businesses out there that could benefit from all of these uh, valuable and high quality services that are available from um, Eagle Labs. How do health tech founders become part of your community? 
Absolutely. Yep. So we'd, we'd love to hear from health tech founders, but, but also, you know, uh, other academics and um, professionals and industry experts as well. Um, yeah. But if you, if you are a founder, I would say the probably best place is to visit our website. Um, so the labs um, for, for the Eagle Labs, but then if you put a dash and put health tech afterwards, that will obviously take you to the health tech page. So um, there's plenty mm -hmm. of information in there, including um, you can subscribe to our newsletter, which something we send out every month telling you about events that are coming up and events that have perhaps happened any other news going on in the sector um we also uh list some of the companies that are within our our network on our website as well uh, it's only nice. a small proportion but we're, we're adding companies to there all the time so that's yeah. a it uh, gives you a bit of an idea and a flavor so so yeah the website has got the inquiry capture through there we've, we've got a twitter page as well which is eagle labs health um so you know you, you search through those then you can you can get in touch um that way Excellent. Well, I really think it's worthwhile and we certainly encourage all of our listeners to uh, visit the Eagle Labs website and to uh, follow you guys on Twitter. I think your email is actually quite worthwhile as well. We all read that and find that really informative. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. And likewise with the giant one as well. There's really great, <laughs> great content in there each week. So Jen, you've uh, very kindly brought along some health tech innovators with you today. So if you'd be kind enough to tell us who they are and we'd love that introduction, please. Absolutely. Yeah. So um, obviously I've given you a flavour of Eagle Labs, but it's, it's much more important, I think, to hear from the founders themselves who are, who are you know, on the uh, putting in all the hard work to, to, to get these businesses up and running. So we're delighted to be joined today with um, Darren Crombie, who's the CEO of Bridget Care, um, and also Fiona Willis, who's the CEO and founder of, of Linkages, um, two businesses that um, we've connected through in various ways and um, thought it'd be really great to, to bring them on to, so they can share obviously what they do, fantastic um, innovations that they've got. And um, you can obviously uh, ask, ask away more sure. questions. I'll hand back to you, Barry. Oh, excellent. <laughs> Yeah, well, Jen, once again, thank you very much. And uh, we're very proud to have our partnership with you guys. And we're grateful to uh, Barclays and the Eagle Labs program for your support of Giant Health. So thank you. And um, Darren and Fiona, it's great to see you guys. And um, we are absolutely champions of everybody who, like you, are committing uh, an enormous amount of passion and energy to advancing innovation in healthcare. So great to have you on board. Darren, let's start with you, please. If you can just tell us briefly, please, a little bit about yourself and a little bit about your business. Yeah, hi, Barry, and hi, viewers. Yes, I'm Darren Crombie. Um, I uh, started a social enterprise called Bridget Care. Um, last year, so it's the start of 2020, we really got going. Um, and we're all about um, support for family unpaid carers. Um, okay. that's, that's our focus area. Nice. And um, do you have a geographic focus as well, or uh, not necessarily? So today we're in the East Riding and Hull in Yorkshire, uh, tomorrow UK wide, and maybe next year, Australia. We'll see. Okay, yeah. sounds good. Well, we're keen to hear, hear more about that uh, in this discussion. Sure. And Fiona, thank you for joining us. Likewise, if you could tell us please a little bit about yourself and uh, your business. Yeah, hi, Barry, great to meet you. Um, well, my background, I'm a marine and environmental scientist. Oh, wow. But, uh, for nearly 20 years of my life, I was also are responsible for um, helping and supporting some older members of my family. And um, that's really what inspired me to start my business linkages. Um, and I guess being a scientist, I started off with lots of desk research. Yes. But I, but I also volunteer as a digital champion. So that means I've, I've helped a lot of people start their digital journey, older people in particular. Nice. Um, I often find that it's a, a life changing experience that encourages them to, to actually try digital. Yes. So for example, um, we have one chap who had a diagnosis of Parkinson's and that it made him think about how, how he was going to manage his life going forwards. Um, oh, wow. Often people who've had a stroke or who've lost a partner, they suddenly find that, that learning digital skills is important. Absolutely. So um, it, our priority has always been <clears throat> to create some, you know, an accessible and in, inclusive experience nice. so that as many people as possible can join in. That's fabulous. Likewise, uh, Fiona, very keen to hear more about that in this discussion. Thank you for sharing. So, um, Darren, to begin with, how did you first hear about Barclays Eagle Labs? Yeah, so I I was looking for a for a place to be based, really, in a postcode initially. Sure. So, you know, that's what I needed somewhere for the tax office to find me. Yes. Um, so uh, we looked around the area. Uh, and back then I had a choice, which was, do I go south or do I go north to Hull? Um, yes. And at the time, Hull was uh, the, one of the cities of culture, so we had there's lots of buzz going on. And yeah. uh, Eagle Labs had a, a new shiny office just on the banks of the River Humber. 
Um, and I turned up and it was £120 a month to have my postcode, have support um, and have a place to, to call home. So that's that's where we started out. And nice. the first business I started with there was like back in 2018. So yes. yeah, I've been a proud member for three years now. Excellent. No, glad to hear that. And I know for certain what you experienced and uh, what has been provided is really valuable for a large number of uh, innovators. So it's good to hear that. Likewise, Fiona, how did you originally hear about Barclays Eagle Labs? I'm not quite sure how I first heard, but right. um, first time I visited Eagle Lab was I was invited by the University of Southampton to attend the opening of the Southampton Eagle Lab. Oh, cool. Um, and then uh, I got an email telling me about the Barclays Health Tech uh, challenge or the health tech response. Yep. Uh, and I applied to be part of that through Barclays Ventures and oh, okay. Code Base um, and the Eagle Labs. And uh, our application to join them was successful. So we're nice. delighted to... Uh, to be part of that that ecosystem. Yes, yes. Well, that's excellent. It's good to hear. What are examples, Fiona, of the type of support that you've received or the type of services you've taken up from Eagle Labs? Well, I think um, for me personally, uh, the coffee mornings during lockdown, <laughs> an absolute breath of fresh air. It was quite Definitely. nice to, to mm. have like-minded people to chat to. Um, and, you know, when it's hard to find a, a real social experience, I think we became quite a nice, friendly community. Yeah. Um, and as a result of that, I met um, one of the Eagle Labs engineers called Sharon Jones, who's based oh, okay. in North, who is a pretty outstanding lady. And in fact, excitingly, on Friday of this week, I have got my first session with Sharon. Um, and we're looking to expand our offering by building out a, an accessible keyboard and a remote control that will work with our apps to uh, further increase accessibility. Fabulous. Oh, that's outstanding. What a great connection. And uh, it's excellent to hear how direct the value you have had from Eagle Labs has made a difference for your business. Likewise, Darren, what are some examples of the services or um, the benefits you've received with your using uh, Eagle Labs, being involved with Eagle Labs? Yeah, so so I um, I guess when I first moved in, I wasn't too sure on how we would build these things that are in my head, these ideas of how we could help people like my granddad stay well in his own home and, and help people like my mom and myself sister yes. to look after him yes. all about and um, so what really helped is having a community a creative community and a technical community in one building so mm. we quickly mm. started building things so we worked with the teams there to build real hardware so this is the kind oh. of circuitry and stuff that goes in some of the devices which then over the years turned into simple home hubs which we can send out to help nice. clients and record what's going on or help yes. automators and then building watches. So all these things are quite technical. Yeah. Um, without the technical infrastructure and support, like printers and 3D printers and all that kind of stuff on hand, it would have been impossible. Um, and wow. I think the, the other key thing for me there, um, and I think this is, I think this came out um, on the instruction from Jen as well, is the um, way that those centers engage the businesses in the community. So it's actually through sure. there that I then got links into customers in the NHS that were tied in with the, the center. Um, and then I guess even further, it's all about our journey. We've gone from a place where we were working with one client there to being supported by Barclays on an accelerator. Um, as we've grown the business, as we've you know got a million pound of grant funding with the support yes. to actually go to the US. So we spent Christmas with Jen and some of the other Barclays teams looking at how we actually launch what we're doing in the UK. Yes. In the US. Fabulous. Yeah. Wow. Uh, I didn't think there'd be such an impressive large answer to the question, but Darren, that is so interesting. And um, obviously, uh, how fortunate for you to have the connections with Eagle Labs. This theme comes up week after week when we're talking to health tech entrepreneurs, the challenge of breaking into healthcare systems. And so um, what you mentioned about getting the valuable introductions into the NHS, um, that's absolutely one of the biggest challenges for everybody. And so good to hear how valuable your association with Eagle Labs has been in that respect as well. Yeah, and I'll just see a quick quick thing there to highlight is the link between Eagle Labs and the um, AHSNs. So these are the academic health science networks. Yes. They're actually based in our office in Hull with Yorkshire and Humber. Yeah. So you've got that relationship there helping you build products and then help you accelerate that to market as well. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely superb. What's next for your business, Darren? Where are you guys going? You mentioned a possible expansion into the USA. What else? Yeah, so we're really looking at building this ecosystem around carers. So we've got accessible yeah. devices. We've got a brand new app that's going to be launched next week. 
Um, and that's going to be available to the six and a half million carers around the UK. Um, uh -huh. And then following that, a few weeks after, we've got a brand new carer marketplace where carers can actually get support and products to help them to look after the ones they love. So really yeah. right now it's about building the platform, building the products, but trying to really reach out and build those channel partnerships that can help us to grow our social impact here at home in the UK before yes. we venture too far away and get carried away yes. with us. Yes, exactly. The uh, Carer Marketplace, that sounds extremely interesting. Could you just let us know a little bit more about that? Yeah, sure. So we've, we've built an app that takes you through as a carer your challenge areas. So how are you doing with your education, your employment, how okay. are you in a caring role? Yeah. And based on that, we use AI to figure out which products can help you, oh, but wow. also can help you look after your carer. And then they're served up in our Carer Marketplace. So oh, those products you know, might be things to help Grandad because we're help identifying he's, he's having challenges with his dementia. Yes, be, you know, us supporting and supporting our products or local uh, charities as well. Yeah, fabulous. So, well, good luck with that. That's extremely exciting, and it sounds incredibly worthwhile. Exactly what the market needs. So, thank you for sharing. Likewise, Fiona, what's up for your business? What's coming up next over the over the next year, for example? Uh, well, um, right now we we have our two apps in the marketplace already. Um, one one's an accessible design, so for those older people who have not yet engaged with digital. And you yeah. know, we must never forget that there are lots of older people who are absolute digital ninjas. Yes. Um, and we're, we're, whereas um, Darren's very much focused on the carer, we're very much focused on the family. Um, so okay. we're, we're encouraging older people to um, engage positively with digital in their first experience. So things like video calling, which we've seen is incredibly important during, during the lockdown. Sure. Um, and messaging and pictures and reminders. Um, and uh, we always wanted to have something that would not be oversimplified. So somebody could oh, okay. start with a simple system and then build and expand as, as time goes by and as their digital skills and digital confidence increase. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, as a result of, of what we've been doing, we're, we're actually at an incredibly exciting moment right now. We've been invited um, to join a, a local consortium um, in Bournemouth, Christchurch and Poole, which is the Smart, Smart Places uh, Research and Development Consortium. And in nice. fact, it was um, Eagle Labs that introduced us to them. Um, so they invited us to bid to be part of their social challenge and they've uh, selected us to provide their communication and user interfaces mm -hmm. for the whole challenge. Um, we're working with three other companies uh, who have a whole load of different skill sets and um, it's great because we're also getting to work with adult social services, which mm. means working with the people who are actually out there on the cold face yes. with things, which I think it's so easy to, to be put in touch with the management, but it's much better to be working with the people who really, really know what the needs are. Yes. So, um, within the team, I've got an amazing digital designer called James, oh, wow. yes. who is uh, working with some new uh, companies um, out of this R&D consortium in terms of accessible design mm -hmm. and another team member, Elsa, who's leading on compliance so that as we go forward, uh, we, we understand what the guidelines are for our systems talking to the NHS systems. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, it sounds yeah. like you have a lot of exciting things coming up. So congratulations on that. Oh, just to say, Fiona, it's great. I think that you've got that link into the local authorities. It's really hard to engage them. And I know we're here talking about health tech, but for me, social tech's more important. And uh, uh, one of the, the things that's great actually about the community um, is that it's not just health tech, traditional medical device type stuff in there. Sure. It's the spectrum, you know, looking at family tech and social tech as well. Absolutely. Guess, yeah, just, I, 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 sorry, Jen. Oh, God, I was just going to say, just to add to that. So you mentioned, obviously, about the Southampton space, Fiona. Obviously, when we opened that, oh, God, maybe 18 months, two, perhaps two years or so ago now. Yeah. And um, that was actually the Southampton City Council that um, wanted to open a space. So we, we've, we've now looking at actively engaging where... Um, certain uh, towns or cities that we haven't got a, a space in, if, if councils or universities are coming to us and saying, you know, we'd like you to actually position a site there. And that, to do your point, Darren, gives us the opportunity to have a relationship there and then obviously make those connections because, to your point, you know, social care, social tech is, uh, I think, is such a, a huge area of growth. Yeah, and I, I think that the reason that Bournemouth are very interested in this is that they obviously have a, a very high number of older people in their community okay um, and so by by being able to to bring them in to use digital they're hoping that they can spend their their budget the social care budget more effectively sure um, 
And uh, so one of the things they, the, the reason we they wanted to work with us is that our system is very modular. So okay. if you've got somebody who's starting, <clears throat> they can increase the number of things they're using. But importantly, if you've got somebody who's had digital skills, but now has cognitive decline, you can also re-simplify the system so that you can keep them yeah. um, in touch with family, which is probably the single most important thing. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, Fiona, that's very interesting. I hadn't thought about that before, but I can imagine how valuable the digital input would be there. And um, so uh, good to hear. What would you say, Fiona, um, is missing in terms of support for the health tech ecosystem? Would you say that, you know, there's things which are like missing pieces of the puzzle when you're getting your business off the ground and um, when you're trying to grow your business? Would you say that there's um, some areas of, uh, of, of, of need that are still untapped out there? Um, I think probably the m thing that I notice the most is I live in a very rural location. Sure. Um, if I lived in London or Silicon Valley, it would have been much easier because you're surrounded by like-minded people. Hmm. Um, but I think that COVID has changed that somewhat because we've all had to work remotely. Yes. And as I said earlier, obviously we've been very lucky to be part of this Barclays ecosystem. Um, and it's through that that we've now been introduced to the Bournemouth Digital Hub. So I think that it's, I'm hoping that this sort of slightly more remote working continues. <laughs> works for my company. Yes. Yeah, well, I think uh, the new normal is going to include an awful lot of that, isn't it? So um, it's good to hear how valuable the support from the Barclays Eagle Labs has been, especially with the, the virtual engagement that's available there. So um, that's interesting. Likewise, how about from your perspective, Darren? Would you say that there's anything missing in the in the generic, um, if you will, entrepreneurial ecosystem? I think, well, you know, when, you, when I was starting up back in 2018, I was yeah. a bit naive, so I kind of figured, I got some great ideas and some experience and worked in the NHS and um, I was going to change the world. And, and actually it turns out that ideas are worth nothing. Uh, you know, <laughs> until you've proven them, you know, you're not going to get any support and cash from anyone. So it's been a long journey for us, um, but actually probably the right thing in terms of the way we've gone around it. So stay sure. in a social enterprise, um, you know, staying bootstrapped and then growing maybe a bit slower than if we'd have gone to try and raise capital, whether we'd have got it or not, I don't know. Yes. Uh, but as a start, you know, the key thing is, you know, how do you keep the lights on? How do you keep the team paid? How do you look after your own mortgage and stuff? And and actually just having a community that you can reach out to and speak to about, you know, your personal challenges and, and also that community that are all trying to do the same thing, you know, make yes. a difference. That's, that, that's been great. Um, it'd be great if Barclays wanted to give us another you know, 500k <laughs> start funding us, but I think that's great. Yeah, can I get in that queue as well, please, Darren? <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, well that makes that does make sense, Darren. Looking at the healthcare ecosystem, looking at the healthcare system itself, what would you say that the healthcare providers could do better in terms of engaging with um with the early stage businesses, with startups like yours, for example? Yeah, so I think I think actually in the UK we've got a great system to support health tech into trials through academic health science network through yep. med city type partnerships. Uh, but for years we've said it, and we're still saying it: we don't move out of the trial. So NHS England, NHS X um, aren't forward looking in terms of how we actually provide scaled adoption of health tech. Okay, um, there's good reasons for that, right? We're all busy, especially right now with COVID and. It's more important to put in place video consultation products than it is to put in place preventative care solutions right now. Yes, yes. So um, I think that's that's the biggest challenge for any of us. It's how, how do you move from trial to broader scale adoption mm -hmm. um, with the NHS? And then outside of that, um, in the more kind of private space, um, I think because we are um, a risk, you know, a, a startup's a risk, whether you're in fintech or health tech. Sure. So, but in health tech, right, the risk is, you know, patient safety. And so um, how do we engage and get adopted by the, the those those private organizations in the UK? Yes. That's a tricky one. I've not really figured it out. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would completely agree with you, with you, Darren. I think that um, it, it is very hard to to take those first few steps. Um, uh, but I think I think the system in the UK is good. Um, for example, there's, there's a, an organization called Orca who assess yep. uh, health tech. Um, digital products 
And I think they have put together quite a good system because they understand the difference between products that might be going into acute medical care right? Or compared with products that might be looking at more the social care side. However, okay. as Aaron said, I think that, you know, we can all understand why places like the retirement and care sectors have to be incredibly careful because sure. they're looking after some of the most vulnerable people in society. Mm -hmm. um, however, I, I do firmly believe that we are all getting more digital. Mm, as we absolutely. age, we will be the digital, we will be digitally able. So I think the health, the, the, the care and retirement sectors really do need to understand that you can't build care homes without Wi-Fi. We wouldn't build a school without Wi-Fi, would we? No, no. And it's fascinating, isn't it? How um, Wi-Fi, of course, has been around for, uh, from one perspective, it's been around for quite a long time. But, uh, and maybe we take it for granted, but uh, of course we absolutely don't have anywhere near 100% penetration, do we? Uh, so um, uh, these things do take uh, longer, I suppose, to get fully implemented than, 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 than you'd expect initially. Well, I think, I think to that, uh, that point as well, um, to Fiona's point, I think there's a statistic around only 45% of care homes. I mean, that, that might have been a couple of years, you know, of something from a couple of years ago, but that have Wi-Fi, you know, and if you think to, to your point, if, if the generations that will be needing that sort of care in, in 10 years time, even even now or five years time, but, you know, it'll be, in 10 years time, especially, we will all be very uh, adapt to utilising digital in our day to day lives. Sure. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's something that, that that really needs to sort of yeah ramp up and change now, really. The, there was a, a retirement complex built near me six years ago. I volunteer there to teach digital skills. They do not have Wi-Fi. Wow. I just cannot believe that. No, it's quite extraordinary. This whole digital access thing is quite profound, isn't it? I wonder if we could get Deliveroo to sponsor the Wi-Fi there or something <laughs> like that. I think I think though, what Fiona's done in that space as well, you know, that user centre design, understanding the end users is, is key. And, you know, it's far too often that, you know, health tech startups, the spin outs run, up, run by people like my dad, great guy, but he's a doctor, you know, that understands tech and sure. don't necessarily understand the amount of people offline. When I was on the uh, San Francisco course, there were some fees D's on there and they would give me a kick in basically because I was saying we're building stuff for an offline generation. Um, and they said, well, everyone's online in, in the US. So I did a quick Google and 40% of the over 75 are still offline, not using mobile apps in the US. Yes. Yeah, yeah really interest in the perception of the people with the money, the feces, mm -hmm. uh, and then the actual reality on the ground. Yeah, exactly. 100%, 100% right, Darren. Yeah, no, um, interesting. Well, in addition to um, Wi-Fi uh, accessibility, um, what would you say, Fiona, what have been some of the biggest challenges for you getting your business off the ground? Um, I think to start with, it's building the right team. Mm -hmm. um, it's critical. Uh, I'm very lucky I have a great team around me now. Nice. Um, and then I suppose the challenges I'm facing right now would be, again, from being in a rural location, how, yep. do, I, how do I approach the right people to build up a board of advisors? Because I think that that's, it would be important for me going forwards. Sure. But, um, following on from that, if once I've got some advisors, I would feel um, more ready to go out and look for, for funding. Um, but I would uh, really want to be looking for funding that came with, with mentorship. Of course. Right people. Absolutely. And um, likewise, Darren, how about for yourself? Is it similar or different things? What are examples of some of the biggest challenges you've experienced getting your business up and running? So, so we were really successful last year in, in uh, winning the finals and getting through to phase two for some SBRI funding. Um, and that's allowed us to really scale the business. So we've kind of gone from four people to, to 15 in the last five months, which has nice. been great. Wow. Um, but then there's a lot of responsibility on that. You know, I've got uh, clients that we've got to provide services to. I've got carers we're supporting. I've got a team to support. So, um, yeah, the biggest challenge for me is just, you know, as you grow, the responsibility grows, your commitments grow. Absolutely. And it is a balancing act, you know, yeah. keeping all those things balanced, happy staff, happy clients, happy end users. Mm. That, that's mm. difficult. And so that's probably, you know, what keeps me asleep now. And and the, uh, one of the key things, this, this year we have to prove our model. We have to prove that... If you spend a pound on a, 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 a carer through us, you save twenty pound in acute care because that's effectively what our model is. Yes. So that's you know another thing that keeps me awake. But we're going to get there. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Could you clarify, Darren? What is the model for your business? What's the uh, revenue model? 
So we um, are looking at different models actually through the trials. So um, primarily we've been uh, engaging with local authorities um, okay. to, to work with us, um, but actually the budget isn't really there for preventive care. So in that side, yeah. Really looking at the emerging integrated care systems. Um, if we can provide a solution which empowers family carers to reduce strains on health and social care teams, mm -hmm. then the IPS will be perfectly positioned when they're ready to, to use those type of products and solutions. Yes. Uh, and then we also are looking at the direct consumer model because you know if you can buy this for your granddad or for your mom or the watch, you know, directly from our store, then that's that's another a great opportunity to absolutely self buy. Yeah. Yeah, very interesting. Well, we're going to uh, wrap up in a few minutes. I'd love to continue this conversation with all of you guys. I wish we were in a beer garden in a pub somewhere and I could buy the next round. And uh, I'd absolutely love to hear a lot more about everything that you're doing, Fiona. And likewise, Darren, your businesses are incredibly interesting and uh, making such an important contribution in healthcare and therefore, of course, in society. But we are going to uh, wrap up, like I said, over the next few minutes. So um, Fiona, I just wanted to ask you, what advice would you give to other people that were thinking of founding a business? Um, I guess the advice I wish I'd given to myself, and that's <laughs> be brave and put yourself out there. Yeah, no, very, very true. And um, a heck of a lot easier said than done, isn't it? But uh, uh, Yeah, I would say so. I think that in a way, lockdown has been good for me because I okay. feel more confident sitting at my desk behind a camera than I would if you put me in a room with 100 people. Sure, yeah. Well, if that's the case, very happy to continue having these um, virtual conversations with you. <laughs> and likewise, um, Darren, uh, what would you, uh, what would you uh, like to offer from your own experiences? What advice would you give to people that are thinking of launching new businesses or that are just getting off the ground? Well, first, I'd just like to say, you know, regards to the beer garden, I think we'd all like to be in your garden from the, <laughs> the, from the background. That's pretty cool. But um, it's always it, funny in England. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's cute, beautiful. So, um, yeah, what, one of the, I guess the main advice from, from me would be, you know, there's a saying on the wall in the office as you go into C4 the Iron Hall, and it says, if you're, if you're the smartest person in the room, then you're in the wrong room. And I think that's, for me, the key thing. So surround yourself with people that are smarter than you and people that you've got respect for that will tell you when you've got the wrong idea because you can invest a lot of your life and time into stuff that may not go anywhere. So take yeah. the advice and, uh, oh, but yeah. also, you know, be strong, you know, be resilient. You know, people, yeah. people give you great advice. Some people will give you poor advice and you're going to have to just struggle through it, I'm afraid. Of course. No, it's a very good point. I really respect that concept of, you know, surround yourself with uh, uh, people that are, uh, you know, perhaps more intelligent and capable than you. I certainly hope I've accomplished that in this conversation today. But um, Darren, thank you. And Fiona, thank you so much. We're going to wrap up now. And Jen, I just wanted to ask you uh, a little bit about, uh, in summary, about a, a vision for Eagle Labs in terms of what are you guys hoping to accomplish this year? Uh, what are some of your plans for the next year? Yeah, sure. So um, we're obviously just in the process of reopening. Um, nice. we, obviously, I appreciate in, in Scotland, well, you know, slightly different variances of rules, but we're, we're navigating through the reopening of our physical sites. Um, we have got some new sites um, that, that will you know, be, be coming down the line. As I say, we're still very keen to expand our physical network and we very much got a bit of a, an Eagle Labs as a service sort of model. So any local authorities, um, universities we're working with all sorts of different companies now where they're you know sort of coming to us so we'd love to still hear from people that you know we would like to engage with us on on that um from a, from a health tech angle we're still continuing with quite a lot of virtual activity still because we found that obviously our, our reach you know we can go national uh, on on live events so yes. still got loads of fantastic events coming up this year for that and and content um so so yeah lot, lots going on both across i think the sort of digital platforms and virtual channels but also great to have our, our sites back open and welcome businesses back into the spaces actually get to start seeing found, um, founders and part our partnerships as well meet, meeting our partners face to face that's what i'd like nice. i'd like to i'd like to get out of these four walls for a day's <laughs> work at some point this year so hopefully uh, yeah we can all catch up uh, in that beer garden later on in the year absolutely Absolutely. Well, look, Jen, thank you so much. And obviously, Fiona and Darren, what a pleasure to have you guys on this week's episode of Healthy Innovators Live TV. Thank you. And of course, good luck with your impressive and uh, important ventures. Healthcare, uh, from my perspective, is the absolute finest, most important, most noble uh, sector. And uh, you guys are doing good work and it's important work. So congratulations 
And um, we're here to champion everything you guys are doing. So thank you very much for being on board and sharing with us. And uh, we appreciate your time. Likewise, Jen, thank you. Uh, as you know, coming up in May, from the 17th to the 21st of May, is Giant's new program this year, which is European Health Tech Innovation Week. That's starting on Monday, the 17th of May in Liverpool. And so uh, Fiona and Darren, we absolutely invite you to come up. Barclays, of course, and Barclays Eagle Labs will be presenting at uh, the Liverpool event and the whole week. And so uh, we're grateful to Barclays Eagle Labs for your valuable sponsorship. And uh, so that's Monday, the 17th of May in Liverpool, um, sponsored by Barclays Eagle Labs and also by McKinsey and Vodafone and Liverpool City Council and uh, another of other businesses and uh, local academic institutions. Going to have a lot of very interesting presentations. Also, coincidentally, Monday, the 17th of May is the very first day that the British government has set uh, for the reopening of business and events, trade shows and conferences uh, following the most recent lockdown. So um, by happy coincidence, the uh, government set that Monday, the 17th of May is the first day. You can resume having real world face-to-face -face conferences and trade shows. And on that day, uh, Giant Health is leading with um, our Health Tech Innovation event up in Liverpool. So if you go to our website, www.giant.health, uh, you can learn more about that. And we invite all of our listeners, of course, to join us. That can be either a real world, you can come and meet us in Liverpool, or the entire event is available virtually. Um, but anyhow, thank you once again, Jen. Thank you to Barclays Eagle Labs and uh, Fiona and Darren. Good luck. Thank you so much. Bye, guys. Thank you guys. Thank you. Bye-bye.